Okay, so in an earlier video, I promised that I would put up another tape showing why it's true that ought of r over q just consists of the identity morphism. Why ought of r over q is the trivial group. It only has the identity automorphism. So in this video, we'll see why that's true. And the only proof of this that I know is rather long. And it's kind of a pain. So I'm just going to outline it. I'm going to let you, if you are so interested, fill in the blanks. So, just to recap, we're going to prove this is true in this video. There are several steps. I'm not going to go through the details on any of them, but I'll sort of outline how the proof goes. So, maybe we should call this a proof sketch. Alright, so our base assumption is, let's just let sigma be inside of ought of r over q. We want to show that sigma has to be equal to 1. That's our goal. We want to show that sigma is the identity. So here's one way of doing this. This is the only way, way I know, and it's kind of long. There are several steps. So the first step is to note that if you've got any real number r, that r is greater than 0 if and only if you can write, well, maybe I should say, there exists some s, this is greater than or equal to 0, there exists some s inside of r such that r is equal to s squared. So r is greater than 0 if and only if r can be written in the form s squared. Sorry, r is greater than or equal to 0 if and only if r can be written in the form s squared. And this is helpful because it links this order property of r to an algebraic property of r. Once we've got algebraic properties, then we can start talking about sigma more easily, because sigma is a fundamentally algebraic object. So, using this, we're going to conclude that sigma of some real number r is greater than or equal to zero, if and only if r is greater than or equal to zero. That's where we get the second fact. All right. So what do we do then? Remember, I'm just, just sketching this. It shouldn't be totally obvious how we go from one step to the next. I'm just kind of sketching what you do. So from this, we're going to conclude, or the next thing we're going to conclude is that, well, switch fonts here, is that for any real numbers, A and B, we have that a is greater than b if and only if sigma of a is greater than sigma of b. And to just to give a hint, maybe, the way that you'd end up proving this is by considering a minus b, and then using this previous fact. Just sketching. Okay, so we've got that, and maybe if you, maybe if you know a bit about topology, so know some topology, then you can already see why this is going to imply that sigma, viewed as a function from R to R, is continuous. I think to see this, what you would need to know is that the order topology on R, this is just a side remark. If this is not something you're familiar with, don't panic. This is just a side remark for people who've seen this. The order topology on R is the same as the regular topology. Same as regular topology. Regular topology. So, Maybe if you know this fact, then you can already see from 3 why it's going to be true that sigma is continuous. That's what we want to prove next. We want to prove that sigma is continuous. And if you know something about the order topology and how it relates to regular topology, then maybe you can already see this. But if you haven't heard of this, don't worry, because we'll discuss the same thing. We'll see kind of how to do it from scratch. Okay. So, as we said, what we want to show now is that 
sigma viewed as a function from r to r is continuous. This is the important point. Maybe this deserves to be kind of bolded as a point in the proof. So this is what we want to prove next. And maybe before we get into it, I want to say why this is important. Why would we care about it being continuous? You know, you don't, it's not nice when a proof kind of uh, proceeds logically from one point without any sense of overall design. So I want to tell you what the overall design is before we go into the details. So why do we care about showing that sigma is continuous? Well, the reason why we care about this, maybe let's go over here. So the reason why we care about this is that this is going to be enough to imply that sigma is trivial. This will imply that sigma is equal to the identity. So why is that? Well, remember sigma is inside of i of r over q. So sigma fixes q. And q, this is the important fact, is dense. It's dense in r. So Maybe what we care about is that every, every real number can be written as a limit. Be written as a limit. R is equal to lim, as n goes to infinity, of qn, where the qn are rational numbers. So Q is dense in R. That's telling us this. Again, now, let's suppose that sigma is continuous. Let's see why this is useful. Well, remember, one way of cashing out what it means to be continuous is to say that it commutes with limits. So in other words, it's going to be the case that sigma of Lim as n goes to infinity of some sequence xn is going to be equal to lim as n goes to infinity of sigma of xn for any convergent sequence, convergent sequence xn. That's what it means to be continuous. Or that's one way of cashing out what it means to be continuous. So for any convergent sequence xn, maybe just to have the notation straight, I should write this as one actually read sequences. So for any convergent sequence xn, we've got this identity. So that's where continuity is useful. And can you guess now how this is going to help us knowing that Q is dense in R? Well, this tells us that Sigma of R then, that's equal to sigma of lim as n goes to infinity of qn for some rational numbers qn. And this is equal to limit as n goes to infinity of sigma qn, which, because sigma fixes q, is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, of qn, which is just equal to r again. So sigma of r is equal to r. Let's just quickly see how we prove this. So let's suppose that sigma is continuous. Let's just review what we did. All right, so supposing it's continuous, then it has this nice limit property. OK, so far so good. And because q is dense in the real numbers, Every real number can be written as a limit of rational numbers. That was the second point. So using those two points, this point, this hypothesis about continuity, and this thing about the density of Q, we get, okay, well, pick some R, pick some real number R, then let's apply sigma to it. And R is a limit of rational numbers. 
using continuity, we exchange those two things. And then using the fact that sigma fixes all of the rational numbers, we conclude that it has to fix the limit r, too. So that's why we care about showing that sigma is continuous. All of these other things are just true, right? I mean, it's true that q is dense in r, and that gives us this consequence. So really what we need in order to make this argument go through, in order to show that sigma is the identity, the hypothesis we need to validate is that sigma is continuous. So that's why knowing that sigma is continuous implies that sigma is equal to 1. And that's why we care about it. And that's why we want to show that sigma is continuous. All right. So how do we do it? Well, so maybe we'll have a subpoint here. What we're going to do is notice that if a, maybe I should write it like this, if 0 is less than some real number r, which is less than, this is important, the rational number 1 over n, n is some natural number. Remember, the natural numbers are 1, 2, 3. If 0 is between r and n, it's going to be true that 0 is less than sigma of r is less than 1 over n as well. And I claim that this point, 4 dash, is going to follow from 3. If you think about it, you can see a way of using this fact 3 in order to get 4 dash. All right, and 4 dash is actually enough to prove that sigma is continuous. Maybe I'll just write that as sort of saying you can deduce this conclusion that sigma is continuous. And again, because I'm sketching, I'll sort of leave it as an exercise to see why that's true. And then we're done. So the whole game here this entire time is to show that sigma is continuous. And I claim that if you follow these four steps, then you'll be able to do that. And that will just as we said over here, be enough to imply that sigma is the identity, which is what we wanted.